Hey guys, welcome to my video. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating a bootable WinPE USB. Before we jump in, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. Really appreciate all your support. All right, guys, this link will be in the description. Head over to the Microsoft link. First thing you're going to do is download the ADK. We're doing this for the latest version. Steps will essentially be the same for any version that you're working with. We're going to download that ADK and we're going to run the setup. You can change this path if you want. If you're working on another computer and just want to download it for preparation, you can do that as well. But we're just going to go ahead and install it to the default location. Hit next. I'm not going to send Microsoft any information. That's totally up to you. Next. Don't really have a choice here. You got to accept. All right. The only thing we need, guys, is the deployment tools. So if you want any of the... If, if you want any of this other stuff, that's fine. It's up to you. But for this tutorial, you just need the deployment tools. Click install. You got to accept the UAC prompt that pops up there and the installation will be underway. Give this a second. Um, I'll probably fast forward this, but uh, just hang out while this progresses. All right, guys, that wasn't too bad. We can go ahead and close this window because we need to now download the uh, PE add-on. So go ahead and close this out. Now you're going to get the link right below this one. Download the WinPE add-on and then we'll run that setup. Same thing here, guys. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to use the default path. This is about three and a half gigs. So just make sure you have enough space on your drive. Go next. Again, I'm not going to send data to Microsoft. Totally up to you. you Got to accept. And it's the only option to install the WinPE. Accept the, uh, you have to accept the user account control, the UAC prompt. And then go grab yourself a cup of coffee. This will take probably, depending on your uh, internet speed and your drive speed, it'll probably take anywhere from three to six minutes. So we'll fast forward this and we'll be back. All right, guys, that completed. So we can go ahead and close that out. Probably took about two minutes. All right, now that we've got those both installed, next thing you're gonna wanna do, guys, is click on your start icon and search for deployment. And you're gonna see deployment and imaging tools environment. Make sure you run this as admin, guys. So when you do that, you'll get a UAC prompt because we're running as admin. Just accept that and you should have a command window like this. So I'm gonna increase the font. Hopefully you guys can see it a little better. So if we right click at the top, go to properties, go to font. Obviously you don't have to do this, but 36, is that too big? Yeah, let's go a little smaller. Let's try 32. It's pretty good. All right, now we see that the command or the uh, command window has a very long path in it in the display. So obviously for demonstration purposes, that's not gonna be too good. So we can do a little pro tip here and type in prompt space dollar sign G and that'll take us straight down to the carrot. Uh, if you wanna prove you're still in the correct directory, you can type CD and hit enter. And that's kind of the equivalent of a PWD in Linux or a print working directory. And that shows us we still are in that correct directory. All right, guys. So now that we've got that, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna type in copy PE and see what the options are. So we see we have the different architectures here for whatever you're running as far as your system. Most systems nowadays, if you're running Windows, you're gonna be running a 64-bit, but you can always go to system properties and verify that. Uh, I'll be interacting with the 64-bit version. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is create a working directory. This is optional. You can dump this in like your documents or downloads or desktop, but make it a little cleaner. I'm gonna create a uh, working directory on my C drive. So we can do MKDIR for make directory. And then I'll just make a directory called WinPE. There we go. So now we have a working directory and now we're gonna copy the PE files by typing copy PE AMD 64, which is the uh, architecture of the version we'll be working with. And then we'll copy that over to the working directory and then the new directory inside of that working directory. So my WinPE working directory and then a new folder called WinPE underscore x64. You don't have to name it that. You can name it what you want. Hit enter. And this will copy all those files down. Okay. 
So now that we have them copied down, we're going to want to create an ISO out of those files. So how do we do that? We're going to use the command make win PE media. Now let's just hit enter here first guys to see what our options are. Okay. So there's a few options. The one we're interested in today is the dash ISO option. So here's some examples as well, guys, if you want to create an ISO, you're essentially going to run the make PE media uh, command, use the ISO flag, and then you're going to specify the directory of where those files are. And then you're going to specify the destination of where you want that ISO to go. So let's walk through that real quick. We're going to do make win PE media. And then we're going to, oops, we're going to use the ISO flag. And then we're going to specify the directory. So it's in the WinPE and then the WinPE X64, which is where we extracted or copied all those files. And then our destination, I'm going to stick it in the WinPE folder and I'm going to call this WinPE underscore X64.ISO. And this should create our ISO. There we go, guys. So to verify that, we can CD or change directory into that directory where we stuck the ISO. So CD, C, WinPE, and then we can do a DIR, and we see that our ISO is right there. So it's pretty easy, right? I mean, it's only a few steps to create that ISO. The next thing we gotta do, guys, is just rip that ISO with a utility that'll make a bootable USB. You can use Rufus, Ventoy, whatever your favorite flavor is. I've been on a little bit of a Ventoy kick lately. Um, that one does give you the option or the ability to just copy multiple ISOs and have a multi-boot USB. So I think it's kind of cool to use that one. We'll be looking at some other tools in the series as well, but today I'm just going to use Ventoy and then you'll have a bootable WinPE uh, USB. And if you ever wanted to add some more ISOs, it's as easy as just pop it in that USB and copy in the ISOs over to the root of that USB. And now Ventoy loads and you'll have options to boot whatever ISO you'd like. So let's go ahead and jump into uh, Ventoy. Give me one second, guys. We'll pull that, I'll probably download it again just to show you, and then we'll get a USB plugged in and we'll get WinPE going. All right, guys, just in case you haven't been watching my other videos, shame on you. No, just kidding. But if you haven't seen them, uh, this is the link. I'll include this in the description of the video to download Ventoy. Let's get the latest zip version for Windows. Obviously, if you're running Windows, you're gonna pull that down. Just scroll down here and look for the latest, again, Windows Zip. Let's go ahead and grab that. Once that's done, let's go ahead and extract it. So show in folder. Let's just get this extracted. You can move this wherever you want, guys, but essentially you're just gonna open it up and then you're gonna launch the Ventoy to disk executable. Accept the UAC prompt. And this is the little utility itself. Just pick your flash drive. I popped in a new uh, 64 gig here. And then just hit install. Just make sure you don't have anything on this flash drive. Obviously, it's going to format it and delete everything on it. So be prepared ahead of time to move your data or have a fresh USB. Hit install. Accept the uh, prompt for yes, it'll be formatted. Your data will be lost. Double check. This doesn't take long, guys. It's going to install the Ventoy utility. And what that did, guys, is it basically prepped the USB um, with Ventoy. So now all you have to do is head over to that USB and just start dragging and dropping or copying ISOs onto it. And then when you boot to it, you'll have a... Uh, we'll actually walk through it, but you'll have a screen where you can choose which ISO you want to boot into. If you can't tell, I think this is a really cool tool, so... Just a little bonus tip for you guys. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do guys, we're gonna head over to that uh, directory. So the directory that we created for WinPE. So let's take a look at that. And then here's our ISO. So we just created this ISO, let's copy it. And let's just paste it right into our Ventoy uh, USB that we created. Give this a second to complete. Nothing like hot coffee on a Friday morning. Weekend's almost here, guys. All 
Okay, that's done, guys. We are ready to boot into this uh, Ventoy USB, and then we'll see what that looks like. And then it's as simple as just hitting enter and selecting the WinPE environment. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick, guys. Make sure our hard worker has paid off and worked. So let me get this plugged into a laptop, and I'll get my HDMI connector uh, plugged in so we can take a look and see what that looks like. Stand by. All right, guys, I've got it plugged into the laptop here. Let's see if we can't get to the boot menu. So I'm running an HP laptop. F9 is my boot key. Uh, whatever your boot key is, you know, obviously press that. So let's go ahead and I see my USBs right up top. Let's select that. This should take us into the Ventoy. Yep, there we are. So like I said, guys, if you copied multiple ISOs, and you can always go back and do it later. Just plug it back into your PC and drag more ISOs into the root of that uh, USB. You'll see all the different ones here. You can rename those if you want them to look different. Um, Vento is it's pretty sweet. You can't tell I'm, I'm quite enjoying it. It has different themes. You can create a custom background here. I'll show you that later where I have my um, unicorn YouTube logo up here and I have a QR code that you can scan to check out my channel and videos things like that so a lot you can do with it enough of that though let's go ahead and boot into the uh, WinPE ISO and make sure all our hard work paid off and works as intended okay you have a couple different um, options here to boot let's just go ahead and run the normal mode press any key to boot hopefully we didn't miss that That flashed up there pretty quick, so I'm not sure if we miss it or not. Let's give it a second here, guys. This is a USB 2.0, so not the fastest thing in the world, but yeah, we made it. All right, so this is loading the WinPE environment. Give that a second to get fully loaded up. All right, guys, so this is pretty much it. Uh, not too exciting, but it did work. We got a lovely command prompt window here. Um, this is not, surprise, surprise, this is not going to be my top rated bootable USB, but obviously this is one that is a legitimate image from Microsoft. Um, so if you have a company that's against using any third party utilities, things like that, where you can't use a uh, Medicaid or Herons or you know you name it you might have to go with this uh, old vanilla WinPE there are ways to add on to this to add additional utilities in my opinion it's not worth the effort when you have these ones that are already out there um, for free that have all kinds of cool tools built in but let's take a look at what is actually on here we have some uh, baked in utilities that are normally available on Windows they can help you do things you can do like disk part um, BCD edit Let's just take a look. If we run a DIR, oh, wrong keyboard. If you run a DIR, and then I think if you do star dot exe, yeah, that'll show us all the executables that are in there, guys. I don't have a um, mouse hooked up to this one, but you can just kind of get an idea there. There's quite a few things that we can work with through the um, command line that'll give us access to, you know. You, you can get the job done, I think is what I'm trying to say here, but not the best bootable USB. But I did want to show you this as part of the series because I know a lot of people will probably ask about, well, what about the baked in Windows PE? How come you didn't make one of that? Well, here it is, guys. I hope this was a really easy to follow along tutorial on how to make that WinPE. Um, feel free to share this with your friends, create it for work, whatever you want to do. And don't forget that Ventoy tip, guys. You had now have a USB if you followed along that you can just dump as many ISOs as you can fit in there and you don't have to carry around five or six sticks. You got one and you can choose what you want to boot into. So again, guys, thanks for watching the video. Appreciate all your support. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm creeping up on a thousand there, guys. So again, all your support is much appreciated. Have a great day, everyone. And until the next one, take care.